Hi, my name is Tom Saunders, and I am the Middle School Administration and Instructional Leadership Director for FCPS. I want to welcome you to another exciting year of learning here in Frederick County, Maryland. We are so grateful for the support of our community, the great work our students are doing, and the dedication of our staff as we implement virtual learning. While it is certainly not a normal school year where students return to classrooms across the county, we are truly enjoying the opportunity to re-engage with our students and families virtually. However, without question, I'm looking forward to the day when we are able to reach and teach students in person again. Since most of our students are accessing instruction right now using digital devices, Frederick County Public Schools staff wants to remind students and parents about the responsible use policies and regulations. Those regulations include the FCPS regulation on responsible use of digital technology and the FCPS regulation on computer use. These regulations can be reviewed on the school system's website. While these regulations are important, today I want to focus on the regulation responsible use of digital technology by students. To help me review this important regulation, I'm excited to be joined by Mr. Gunter, principal of Monocacy Middle School. Mr. Gunter, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. And I first want to congratulate you on your promotion to principal this year and ask you, how's it going? Uh, thank you for the so congratulations. It's going good. It's not how I envisioned my uh, first year starting, but it's been, um, the school year's gotten off to a good start. You know, a lot like to think of it as school, just being school. So even though it's virtual, it's still school, still popping in to meet, to talk to students, and it's been a good start. Great. And how would you say students are adapting to the virtual online experience? I think students are adapting uh, fairly well, um, better than expected. Um, several students and staff struggled the first week getting on, but the first two days we had a few bumps. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of the first week, everything was smooth sailing. Coming back from the holiday, it's been just like, uh, just like school, just minimal interruptions. That's great to hear. So I would like us to focus on the responsible use regulation. So in your role as a principal, what do you think is the most important part of this regulation and what do you and your staff emphasize when teaching this regulation? We really emphasize being responsible, um, that students, when you're um, using um, digital resources, when you're online, that you are responsible for what you do. We also remind students that they just because you post something and then you delete it, it doesn't go away. We want them to be cognizant of their um, digital footprint and the things that they are leaving behind on the web. It doesn't necessarily always go away. That tweet you may tweet or that post you may post, even if you delete it, somebody could have retweeted it or sent it on and it's gone, it's out there, it's as they say, viral. So we really focus on our students at the things they do and that ultimately, the things they do online underneath their name, they are responsible for. So we don't share your personal information. Um, don't share your password with your peers. Don't let somebody say, oh, I forgot my account. Can I use yours today or, and things of that nature? That's, we really want them to focus in on being responsible. And then we really focus in on like to think about you, how you treat each other, how you treat each other in person. Make sure you treat each other that way online. Don't let the absence of a person being in front of you give you let you treat them differently. That's really good, good information. When you think about the regulation, which part of the regulation is the most important to you, not only as a principal, but as a parent? Well, I really think, look at the regulation, I think about student responsibilities. What are they re truly responsible for? And we educate them um, about those responsibilities that through, um, in our building, we use it during our PBIS lessons. Uh, uh, we try to do it biannually. It's built into the curriculum in sixth grade, but we really spend that time educating our students about what's actually in the policy and, and defining the what, what it is for them. Sometimes they don't quite understand what it means to have a digital footprint or and things like that. But as a parent, you know, I, I have two um, daughters in the system. I talk to them and I, and I encourage parents to talk to their students about what their online experience is. If you see that your child is maybe withdrawn, did something happen? And, and so in that digital world, a lot of things happen and, and it's not so easy to turn it off. We may just say, turn it off and delete it, but that's just not the case. So just really make sure you're having good conversations with your children. How do you monitor your children? Um, you mentioned that you have two daughters. How do you monitor their online presence um, as a parent? 
really and truly, I just ask. I have conversations. I ask them what's going on. Um, I'll ask them about different social media aspects. They're more um, up to date on things like that. So I'll ask because a lot of times I'm learning. Um, if I have a question, they're like my best resource. But really and truly just to have a conversation. I don't necessarily go through their devices or anything like that, but I, I will ask. So what's going on? And, and I really just built, try to build a strong relationship and trust with them. And that's what I do. That's awesome. What advice would you give to parents, especially at the last two weeks we've been implementing a virtual learning? You said you went into classes and you've been um, monitoring how students are doing. What do parents need to know that can make their home life a little bit easier or more successful for students? I think they need to um, communicate with the student. Ask the student, how are you doing with um, attending the virtual classes? Um, are you distracted by, by, by your peers if they have their camera on? Just find out what nuances are causing them problems and then work on ways to solve that. Is it, is it too loud in the house? Can we move you to a, a different spot? Um, are you using headphones? If maybe if we give you some headphones and you can um, mute out the background noise here in the home, it will be easier for you to focus. And if parents and students are really struggling, I would encourage parents to reach out to the school, reach out to the teacher, reach out to the school and see what resources and things that the school can pro provide to help with the situation. Has there been one particular thing that you have observed a teacher doing that you are amazed by, want to celebrate? Is there anything that a teacher is doing that you really think should be raised up? I don't necessarily have one thing or one teacher. I have an entire staff, and I'm pretty sure that's around the county. Every principal will probably tell you that they have staff that are really, truly stepping up and being creative with the technology, but really taking the time to build a relationship with their peers, with the students rather, even though it is online. And I think um, to celebrate just one staff or one incident wouldn't do justice to really and truly what's happening right now. Well, I can't thank you enough for spending time today because I know how busy you are as a principal and I want to celebrate you and thank you for your leadership and thank the Monocacy Middle School staff for all that they're doing to make virtual learning a success for our students. Thank you. Digital citizenship is all about teaching students how to be good stewards of the digital world. It is important that staff and parents model responsible online practices and habits. The highest priority is teaching our kids to protect themselves. This means showing them the difference between their personal and public life, knowing what is personally identifiable information and not posting it online, supporting their engagement in the virtual learning classes and their active participation in the learning process. And if your child has social media accounts, teaching them what an appropriate photo to post is, and on the other hand, what is not. Understanding that not everything that happens to them needs to be published online and talking to them, as Mr. Gunter had said, about what should be posted and what shouldn't be posted could be very beneficial to them. How to respond to a friend when they are angry and not commenting about it on social media. Teaching students to be aware of the digital footprint they are creating. Emphasizing what they do or post online today will stay with them in the future. Thanks for partnering with us as we help students become successful lifelong learners and successful digital citizens this year.